All systems are go. All right, baby. Education, entertainment, and news insight. This is The Hemp Session with your host, Oliver Dow Camino. Q announcer. Welcome back, everybody, to another hemp episode with The Hemp Session. I am your host, Oliver Dow Camino. And man, oh man, today I'm going to be dropping a bomb that is going to shock people and is going to reverberate in the hemp industry as a whole and in the CBD isolate market as well because there is now things coming down the pipeline that are not being reported, but we have conclusive evidence on some real fronts. (laughs) So all I can tell you folks is you are in for a real treat today, but you're always in for a real treat, right? Cool. Actually, before we get started, why don't I do a really, really big shout out? And this is going to be going out to Arthur Marcus over at Sakenzia Ross Ferenc uh, Law Firm because these guys are the biggest in the hemp CBD world. They do all the monster transactions. So huge shout out to Martha, uh, Arthur Marcus, okay? Uh, yeah, guys, here we go. Let's dip into it. Now, before I drop the big one, we're going to cover the news first, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the deep details. Because what you're going to hear today is definitely going to be that what is going to give you the real insight as to how to navigate these uncertain um, waves or (laughs) waterways. (laughs) So here we go. Florida lawmakers approve hemp industry. Whoa! This is the northescambia.com. And yes, it's very real, guys. Remember I told you guys last week that now Florida is just basically trying to come up with the right formula. And it appears that they have totally embraced it. And literally there was only one opposition. Yeah, no, shame on them. Shame on them for that one opposition. But you know what? It doesn't matter because the overwhelming majority, oh, it's, it was almost unanimous. So that was great. Okay. That's exactly what we were looking for. And we knew that that's going to happen. So now Florida is definitely going to be moving forward on that front. Of course, over at WGBH.org, uh, we've got the uh, Massachusetts farmers. They are, of course, being uh, kept out of the CBD market. And it's a, it's a real shame. So basically, Massachusetts, I think what they're going to do is just allow people to, you know, obviously do retail things and work the CBD market. But they're just not on board yet with the hemp growing the farming yet okay that's kind of crucial because everybody was hoping that this would be it and so massachusetts the fact that they're not allowing it that's going to be great arbitrage for those neighboring states that actually are allowed to like vermont and everybody else up nearby so that'll be good for them but again i feel really bad for massachusetts we will keep you informed so you will always know what's going on all right now in the chicago tribune We just ran across something that was really, really interesting, and it has to do with everything that I've been reporting with regards to the effectiveness of the medicine and why it isn't when it's not. And I feel really, really, really bad for the person that did this because it's a reporter, and this reporter got fully, fully 100% scammed. After this, I'm going to drop the bomb. So here we go from Chicago Tribune. Two-week trial of CBD oil results in painful conclusion for this user. Bottle is smaller than I expected, only a quarter ounce for a cost of $35. Stop. $35. So how do you really honestly, truly, in the heart of hearts, expect to believe that there's going to be CBD at $35? Let me tell you something. If you actually think that, then you have a fool for a lawyer. And I feel totally bad for you. Nothing like that exists. Okay, a small tincture of real CBD oil, quarter ounce, (laughs) you're talking about $300. But that is the real medicine. It's going to last you very long and it will change your life. That's what's going on. So full spectrum hemp CBD oil 
Its label states in the small print. Okay. And this is the actual writer now who did this. The, uh, the reporter. Smaller print are the words dietary supplement. Uh oh. I thought anything and everything can legally fit under that vague description. And that actually is accurate, right? But that's how it's supposed to be labeled. So that, that part of it is no issue because it is what it is. Now, the reporter basically did the two-week deal, right, totaling two small bottles of CBD oil, which is all the rage these days, and Americas are gullible, according to the writer, which I will disclose at the end of this. For years, um, he's experienced chronic knee pain, likely caused by too much jogging, biking, and playing uh, any sport with a ball, had lots of tests on both knees, MRIs, blah, blah, blah. So he's got a cyst in one knee and a meniscus tear in the other. If he moves right knee in a certain way, it feels like being stabbed with a knife. Ouch, that's not fun, and I totally understand. Of course, he's 57 years old, uh, who's a really like a teenager, like a dog will eagerly run to catch a frisbee if you throw in his direction. That's very funny, and we appreciate the humor there. So let's take a look here. After two weeks, because of the fact that he had consumed so much up, Garbage and it was just clearly just a fake. I almost wouldn't be surprised if that was just hemp seed oil and that it may have just been labeled as whatever it was. And most novices would never know the difference, right? Unless it's really tested by an independent lab that really knows what they're doing with the oversight of doctors uh, and chemists and that kind of thing. If you don't have that, you're not going to have anything. I'm so sorry to really break your heart. And so... The conclusion is this. This person did not uh, see any benefit, right? Basically felt like got totally ripped off. Now at $35, fortunately, I understand that that might be a lot of money to some people. And believe me, one, now that it's legal, it, I'm sure that insurances are going to start embracing this and will start paying for, you know, just like they do for Medicare, Medicaid kind of things uh, when they have the that portion of the insurance, right? So basically this was Jay Davich. Uh, that's the person that wrote this, the article. And, you know, I obviously, you know, Jerry Davich, I feel really, really bad. I'm so sorry, Jerry, that this happened to you. What I will do is most likely send you a complimentary bottle. All you have to do is reach out to me so that I can give you the bottle on us. And then you tell me the real result, because when I send you the real thing, that's truly genuine CBD oil. And it's verified from the genealogy from the seeds up, uh, then, then you're going to see a real, real thing now. And so now I'm going to drop everything. Are you guys ready for this? (laughs) I don't think you're ready for this. Diamond CBD. And this company claims that they have the best of the best, right? Has just been conclusively tested independently. And it's coming down the pipeline that they're finding all kinds of uh, chemicals and filler agents. There is really very, very, very just traces of CBD. And it truly is the opposite of their claim. Now, that's a real, real problem and shame on any company that is going to be doing that to the consumers because you know what? It really does hurt the overall market. However, once regulation steps in, I warn you, any company that's doing shady things like that will certainly disappear or at least be very heavily fined to where they financially will not be able to bear the burden. And that's what we really hope for because when you have real CBD, it's going to really change your life. That's the bottom line. And you have to know the sources. If you cannot trace it to the seed, then that means it's not real. Okay? And that was one of the bombs I wanted to give to you. Now, the reason the bomb is the way it is, is one thing that I've been constantly telling my listeners. And a lot of you guys are reaching out and telling me, okay, I now see what you're saying and I appreciate that. Basically, the fact that everything's Chinese, 90% of the stuff is synthetic. In the CBD world right now, people are under the impression that there is a price point that everybody's chasing. And let me tell you something, domestic CBD oil, I mean, CBD isolate, you're not going to get it at the price you think you're going to get it at. It's about nearly double that premium. Okay. Everybody is diluting and selling 
Chinese synthetic. That's what's going on. <clears throat> If you want to verify something independently, then what you want to do is because we're not tied to that chain is you want to go ahead and reach out to the hemp session to me. And I will do an independent verification for you to prove to you that you are indeed being had. Okay. Now this is very serious because not many people can make this claim, but I am in the industry on that level. So I'm going to do that for the real consumers. Okay, guys. So that was the bomb. And I don't want to scare anybody. This is just a fact of life. No big deal. Okay. Cool. We're going to go to the Green Bay Press Gazette right now and report on another story. And this has to do with the uh, new era for hemp in Wisconsin and one Ida nation. They're seizing the opportunity. So now you've got the tribal nations as well, you know, on the reservation coming into this game. Let me tell you, these guys know what they're doing. The only thing is going to have to do with the fact that, you know, you've got the three tenths of a percent THC content. That's going to be a hard thing to, uh, Uh, to basically leverage because it's it you know most of the things are hot that's just the nature of the thing the, uh, of the actual plant okay there's nothing you can do about that but once you are starting the process of course you can remove a lot of these things and and make it so that it becomes obviously legal hence why they set the standards as they did now so i wouldn't even uh, worry about that part The tribe first discussed hemp production several years ago with the hope of growing the crop for medicinal industrial purposes. And the council began educating members just two years ago. And tribal members were hesitant because the federal government considered hemp a Schedule One narcotic. And so that has been basically the uh, the issue. But back at Oneida, legal hiccups prevented the tribe from growing five acres last year under Wisconsin's pilot program. And so the game changed again with the passage of the Farm Bill finally. So the nation in June will plant 32 acres of hemp that can be harvested this fall. The tribe hasn't pursued a processor's license, said project manager Mike Torrey, uh, because the state permits growers to process their hemp for internal use. Any product not used internally requires the license processor, something the tribe is exploring. Okay? So, everyone's getting in the game. The only reason I brought this up to you guys is to know that... Clearly, we are keeping an eye on everybody, and we really do want everybody to participate. So that's a great move. We're very happy that the tribes are coming in. Really sad, sad, sad news right now. This one's coming from the dopemagazine.com. This is about hemp plastics. Well, it's actually revolutionary news, not sad. It's sad because... Today, obviously, the state of the plastics consuming the oceans is so bad. Nobody even realizes how bad it is. But let me tell you something. It appears that a solution to cannabis waste that may be too good to be true for now. Here's what's going on. There is a company that has discovered that basically we can make plastics out of hemp. Now, that's a game changer because it, becomes, it automatically becomes biodegradable. And then... Well, the whole world can literally have a revolution that will be akin to the Industrial Revolution, only this time we're actually propelling society as opposed to regressing, right? So cannabis packaging does have a huge plastic problem currently, and that's where this is stemming from. It's a problem that cannabis consumers experience firsthand as well. And yeah, when you go to California, when you go to Colorado, when you go to Vegas, this is something that's very, very evident, and it's a big like exclamation mark. So while plastics hardiness may be handy for childproofing or edibles and keeping sandwiches fresh, it becomes a problem once it's disposed of the natural environment as 90% of plastics are where it can take 500 years or more to degrade for plastic. Okay, that's just crazy. Before then, it enters landfills, suffocates ocean uh, ecosystems and breaks down the carcinogenic microplastics which have already been found in creatures from the bottom of the ocean to an estimated 93% of American humans at the top of the food chain. And it's a problem because they're finding it in remote areas of all over the world, the microplastics. This is not something we can play around. We don't even know what the real consequences are going to be yet. It's just accruing now. And I'm sure some of the cancers are coming from carcinogenics since carcinogenics are a proven way of getting cancer, right? So that's a big deal. 
right now it's kind of the chicken and the egg thing. So there isn't a pre-existing supply chain or a playbook for what these guys are doing. But when you're looking at plastics, you have to realize you're not just competing with the material. You're competing with crude oil. Ooh. That's where your real problem comes in. So the lobbyists are never really wanting this to happen. The thing is that if we allow the paradigm shift and we allow hemp to become ubiquitous and we allow the whole world to produce it because we realize that there's 25,000 uses for this stuff, now we can really make change happen. Not only is it economically going to be the greatest engine of all, this is going to be the revolution that we needed as far as the green revolution is concerned. So hemp plastics are also non-toxic, pesticide-free, recyclable, and biodegradable within six months. Not to mention both lighter and three and a half times stronger than common polypropylene. Are you guys kidding me right now? Why on earth would anybody in their right mind argue with that science? Okay, how? So, obviously, that hemp and other bio-based resins can effectively compete today with traditional resins. This is according to Corey Cratshaw of C2 Renew, a biomaterial designing company in North Dakota, for whom hemp is one of many agricultural inputs. However, he does think that needs to, uh, there needs to be a shift in thinking among molders and manufacturers that bio-based resins can be used in most applications. Again, a paradigm shift is necessary. So, we are attempting to educate people... So hopefully we can actually make this revolutionary, not evolutionary, right guys? So that was the dopemagazine.com. I thought that was a very, very compelling news piece. Okay. Let's take a look here. Now in Virginia, after many years of, uh, you guys all know that Virginia was one of the original hemp states. I, I mean, I don't know that you do know, but I'm telling you that it really was. And I'm on the WVTF.org, okay? Growing our own legal hemp could flourish in Virginia. And the origin of the word for canvas is cannabis. And the reason is, is because canvases were made from hemp. So everything comes from that. And Virginia was definitely a bright spot. And now they have sustainable biomaterials in the College of Natural Resources at Virginia Tech. And hemp has built in market here or, or there rather. It could replace some $900 million worth that's imported with hemp that's locally grown. Wow, that's kind of a big deal. Why are we allowing all these other countries to make all this money? And here we are arguing like we're still in the stone ages or the dark ages, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Now that it's legal to grow hemp in Virginia, hundreds of people have already received state licenses. So here's the thing. First of all, there are 600, 700, hundreds of hemp growers licenses and registrations out of that, literally, you've got only like 10% that have also processing licenses as well. That's where the bottleneck is occurring. Now, another bomb I'm going to drop right now will freak you guys out. Six months ago, you were able to buy... You were able to buy a pound of seeds for $3,000, feminized seeds. That was six months ago. So just before the hemp... Uh, the farm bill. Fast forward to today. The price for one pound of seeds. You guys, it's $10,000. Did I not tell you that that's going to be the real place? <laughs> yes, we still need a lot more seeds and there is just such a shortage. It's really incredible. Having said that, because of the hemp sessions advocation, remember, we are extremely tied into the entire value chain. So for those farmers that really do need the best of the best, we clearly have access to the feminized scenes, full genealogy. Anything that we touch is going to be always with the highest integrity. So we provide full genealogy on everything. The hemp session has access to these things. So I want you guys to know that. April 31st, by the way, is when the Virginia's Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services granted more than 600 industrial grant pour, uh, grower registrations, along with the 92 registrations for processing. So they've now got investors who are watching the policy, but the bottleneck everyone's talking about is the processing, meaning the actual extraction facilities and the refineries. That's a real problem. 
No one knows what to do with that. Oh! And the reason is, is it takes one year. That's really the reason. It takes one year. And unless people understand that, it's just going to be very difficult to, uh, to deal with for the time being. Well, once again, we have come to the end of the show and it has been incredible. So by the way, we are on YouTube. We are Ham Session. Okay. We have the shirts, the t-shirts. We have the long sleeves. We have all kinds of beautiful, um, merchandise. So guys, if you want to support us, the first 10 subscribers every time, every day rather, they obviously, you have to provide us our ad, uh, your address so that we can send it to you and your size and you will receive a free t-shirt, the white one with the big logo. And you can see that at facebook.com slash ham session. Also, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes. We are at the education in iTunes, hemp session and hemp education and CBD as well. So you will be able to find us. Write us, give us your suggestions, commentaries, and of course, get a hold of us if you want to be featured on the show because we are very much, uh, you know, very happy and eager to do that. Guys, may the hemp be with you. I hope you guys enjoyed this hemp episode. And until next time, we love you. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Follow us on Facebook.com slash Hemp Session. 